So the tips that we're gonna go over today aren't going to be the game changer to make your editing that much better. But what they will do is save you a ton of time in doing simple tasks that we typically have to do while editing almost any project. But before we get started with that, I wanna quickly tell you about my updated website, jrtv.com. In the past, everything was a la carte where I sold transitions and titles separately. Now they've been bundled into the pro membership. If you haven't explored what's available in the pro membership now, it's better than ever. Learn all of the ins and outs of DaVinci Resolve and along the way, acquire a couple of certifications for whatever aspect of DaVinci Resolve you're most interested in. Everything in the pro membership is on demand, so learn on your own time. If you're interested in learning more, there's a link in the description. So my first tip is if we ever want to move something on the timeline and reorder a bunch of different clips, that's typically a thing that we uh, want to do. So let's say we were to take this pinkish purplish clip here and we wanna move it in front of this darker blue, green, teal color. Uh, what we typically have to do is, you know, move it up here, take these clips, move it over, and then we could sit that one in there, right? Or, I mean, we don't have to really set it down, but we could move these over and then move that one over. That's how we would you know, do it without having a bunch of different tools in there, or we could copy it by holding down Alt, moving it over, taking these two over and then down, right? So those are all different ways to do it, or what we can do so that we don't accidentally cut off a couple of frames and leave some um, empty space there, is we can click on our clip, we're gonna hold down Shift, and then Control, I believe that's Option on a Mac, Hold down shift control and then, or command, is that command? Hold on a second, now I gotta look this up. So it is the control. Okay, anyways, holding down shift control and then uh, we're going to use comma or period to move over our clip, just like that. It's as simple as that. The other thing that I have to show you here is let's say we wanna move this over and we want it to replace this clip here, right? So we do that but then it's moving the one above it. And that is because we have the auto track selector on. If we were to turn off the auto track selector on the, on the tracks that we don't want, and we move it over, now it'll move over exactly how we initially thought it would. Uh, the track selector is typically there to make sure that timing never gets out of sync, that multiple like clips don't ever get out of sync. That's why they're also down here in audio. Um, so yeah, there is that. That's the first one. So then the next one is what if we wanna add a clip in the middle of a bunch of clips, but we don't want to write over any of the clips, right? So uh, yeah, let me just quickly show you this because most people probably already know how to do this if you've been editing for a while. So we have our two views, we have our source, and then we have our timeline uh, view. And let's say we wanted to take this clip here and we want it to go in between these two bluish greenish clips here. We want this blue clip to go in between there. Now we could highlight everything, slide it down, bring this in, bring this over, delete the space. We could do that. Obviously that's a lot of steps. Or what we can do is we can have that clip, select it, right? Whichever the clip is, and we could just hit F9 and then it'll add it in there. There are two other ways that we could do this. If you don't wanna use keys or maybe you have one of those smaller keyboards that doesn't have the F keys, we can just simply select or click on the clip. So we're dragging at this point, I'm holding down my pointer and I can come over here and just hit insert and it'll bring it in. That's way number two. Way number three is we have an insert button right here that we can also hit. So that's how we would add in a clip in the middle of a busy timeline, wherever we want. So we wanna add it in here. Want to add it into a busy timeline, just like that. If we don't want the top clip to be affected, turn off the take selector, pop it in there, and it'll add it in just like that without having to shuffle everything around. Very easy. So the next one is, let's say we have our whole timeline. I mean, let's just show you. So let's say we have our whole timeline already out, but this particular clip that we have here, so like, let's say we didn't have this here, right? Because we could actually see this clip. Let's say this clip, we want a little bit more of the beginning of this clip, but we want all of this stuff to keep its timing and keep its placing, right? So uh, the way to not do it, it would be to bring it up, slide it over. We can see that we have a little bit there. We don't wanna do that, right? What we wanna do is we want everything else to slide down, and that means everything. Let me turn on my take selector because this is good to have on. Um, maybe we had audio, so let's move this down here because we want this to make sure it stays synced up. Nothing gets messed up. Actually, you know what? 
let's just move this over so this makes more sense because um, that would then get affected by this. Um, so let's say we want it, we want to do everything, but we want this, we want a little bit extra of the beginning of this, right? So to do this, we actually have to go into a different mode and this is referred to as trim edit mode. You can hit T to go into this mode and then we can go into A. So our select mode and our uh, trim edit mode, these are the two different modes. And now it changes our crosshair. So we have a pointer or it goes to this little thing here. And now depending on where we are looking on the clip, we can see that this changes a bunch of different, uh, it changes its uh, icon a bunch of different uh, ways. So I wanna add a little bit more of the beginning of this clip. So if I take my play or my cursor and I bring it right over, I click, now the boxes are showing what extra is to uh, the beginning and to the end of where we have it cut. So we can see that we have a little bit extra there. So we can just simply slide this over. And as you can see, it's if you take a look at the purple clip there, it's sliding all of those clips over, right? We're moving this and we actually, I'm gonna just turn off um, snapping, but we can see that we're just moving this and if I go to full, so we can see the whole timeline, we're moving the whole timeline, right? So that's enabling us to add that little extra onto the end there and not have to be concerned with accidentally messing up one of our previous cuts that we had if we have to come back in and, and uh, adjust something. So a trim edit mode, T is for that one. And then you can A to go back or you can just come up here and click. So the next one is deleting on the timeline. Now there is a little bit of a difference here if you're on a Mac or a PC. And that's because typically on the laptop you don't actually have a backspace key and a delete key, it's just one key together. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to explain everything here but there's gonna be something that is very simple for PC that the Mac has to hit a, uh, you have to hit your function button. What we're gonna do here is we're going to delete this little clip here. And so if we were to hit backspace, it's just going to delete it, right? So that's the delete key on a Mac. It's just going to get rid of the space there and then you can click here and you can remove that, right? So it's two or three actions because we had to delete, then click the gap and then delete again. So that's the first way they do that. Or what you can do um, on a PC, you can hold down shift, hit backspace, and it'll, it'll do everything. It'll, what's referred to as a ripple delete. It'll delete whatever it is and it'll ripple the whole sequence over, timeline over. And I believe on the Mac, you have to hold down function and then hit delete and then that will uh, do the same thing. The other thing for a PC that you can do is you can click on something and hit the dedicated delete key. That's the little right neck, right above your arrow keys where your insert, home, and page up, page down is. Hit that delete key and it'll push everything over. I believe if you have the larger keyboard on a Mac, it works the same as a PC, uh, but most people are, are working on uh, the laptop. So um, yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> Ripple delete and normal delete. Sometimes people want that gap, so uh, keeping that gap there. If you ever have a gap, you can just click and then hit it again and you can get re remove that, so yeah. Ripple delete and normal delete. <laughs> so then number five to round this out is maybe we wanna put something in the timeline or we wanna have some type of a gap in there so let's say we have uh, a situation where a door slams and there's gonna be some anticipation because a crazy event just happened and we wanna just have some empty space. So we wanna take everything that's on the timeline and scoot it down just a little bit for that time period. And so the easiest way to do that is just to select everything after the playhead. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Y and as you can see, when we hit Y, it's only selecting the stuff on that, on that track. So that might be of interest to you, but we wanna move everything so we don't accidentally get something out of sync. Now this has nothing to do with the auto uh, uh, track selector or anything like that. So to get everything, right, cause we have some stuff over here, we have these up here, this one down here, is we're gonna hold down Alt or Option, I believe, and then Y, and that will select everything after the playhead. And so now what we can do is just move everything down just a little bit so that we have that little bit of a gap depending on you know whatever we need to do there. Maybe like I was saying before, we have to you know build some anticipation by having that uh, empty space there. Or we're trying to insert something or build something and we just wanna take everything that's on the timeline right now and just scoot it down a little bit. 
um, or you're just rearranging uh, clips. So I think that kind of covers everything for uh, what I wanted to show you in this video, the five different things that I feel that will make it a little bit better when it comes to editing. Uh, you're not gonna become a better, ed maybe a more efficient editor or quicker editor. You know, you take off a minute here, you take off a minute there over the course of a whole edit. That could be a half an hour or an hour, depending on how long your edits take. Uh, but yeah, those are just, you know, little things, little tricks of the trade that definitely increase your productivity because you're not having to do the same things over and over again, which are definitely good things to know. Uh, like I was saying earlier, that I have the certification courses now that you can take a look at. Those courses are designed to show you all the different things, all the different tools that are in DaVinci Resolve, typically things that wouldn't be a searchable thing on YouTube. And if you don't know to search for those things, you would never know that they exist. Uh, it comes with all the materials that you can work alongside. And then, you know, with that, you get all of the other stuff that used to be on my website. So, uh, over the course of time, I would be adding all of the old stuff back onto the new site, but all of the different uh, tools, the transitions, all the stuff that was on the website. If you go on into my YouTube channel and you look under products, all that stuff will be on the website that is all available within that monthly membership. So take a look at that. If you do go through the certification course, uh, at the end of it, there is a link so that you can go to Blackmagic's end of the certification and you can actually go through their exam. And if you pass the exam, um, then you become a certified uh, user of DaVinci Resolve. You can throw that you know, in your LinkedIn profile. And if you're just the, you know, just using DaVinci Resolve and you're not really uh, an editor per se or trying to be an editor uh, day to day, it's definitely, there's, there's I think a lot of value in that membership and there's continually going to be more value in there with, with all the pre-made assets and everything else. Then you have all the mini courses and so on, but the website will tell you all about that. But I think with that being said, I am out of here. My name's JR. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one. Peace.